Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19 in the New King James Version, if you can get that real quick. Uh, I just want to read this story. And I, I'll, I'll get some points, and if you get happy, fine. If you don't, it's all good. That's on you, right? So the Bible says, Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19 in the New King James Version. It says this. <clears throat> now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers. Somebody say ten. Who stood afar off and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. I should have had some Pastor London in my voice. You know how you had a theatrics. Amen. Jesus, master, have mercy on us. <laughs> so, so verse 14. So, so when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Watch this. And one of them, somebody say one. one. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, arise, go your way, your faith has made you whole or well. If I had to pick a topic, I would pick, I need to be the one. I, I need to be the one. I, I don't have a choice. It ain't up for discussion. I need to be the one. And so you got to understand before I get into the depth of the text, I need you to understand where we are. We're in a place where Jesus has just finished doing ministry work. And the Bible says that he was going through Samaria and Galilee. Now, you got to understand uh, uh, the circumstance here. The circumstance as Jesus was going through Samaria and Galilee, the circumstance was there were 10 men who were isolated because of their condition. They had leprosy. Now, if you know anything about leprosy, it means that you have a disease that's uncurable and the disease is manifested based on the sores that comes on the outside. And so it wasn't just that they were dealing with some on the inside because they had been isolated, but they had their stuff condition, rather, their condition was exposed. Now, I ain't got time to preach this, but have you ever considered if what was going on in your inner life was exposed? So the circumstance where the 10 men who were isolated, leprosy put you in a place where people didn't want to be around you. And they didn't know you have leprosy unless they saw what was going on on the outside of you. And so many people were being kicked out of, of, of the land and being kicked out of their towns as a result of this condition. What if somebody saw your condition and kicked you out? Hmm? What, what if God saw your condition and decided to kick you out? Some of y'all should have gotten happy because your condition, the truth of the matter is that you are dealing with something and you did put yourself in that position. But God didn't look at your condition. He looked at the fact that he is who he is. And so he extended grace. So we have the circumstance. And then, 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 then if you read the text, we have the cry. We have to cry. The Bible says that these 10 men saw Jesus and they said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Jesus, master, have mercy on us. One of the things I like about this is because sometimes you can get into a place that's so bad that all you have is your voice. You can't call nobody. You can't call nobody to come help you. You can't scream loud enough because the pain is so bad. Only thing you can say is Jesus. I, I better stop there because some of you have been in a place just this week where you didn't have no other name to call. But there's something about calling on the name of at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. It's something about the name. At the name of Jesus, demons tremble by that name. When you say the word Jesus, he shows up. I know people say that he may not come when you want him, but he's on time. No, I don't serve that God. Every time I call his name, he's always there because he's omnipresent. The cry, the cry, the 
cry. Then, 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 when we read the text choice, we have the, the compassion. We have the compassion. Jesus heard their cry. And so when Jesus saw them, he had compassion on them. And not only did he have compassion, he gave them instructions. Now, you got to understand, you can't just ask Jesus to have compassion on you and be sad with you. You want to tell, you want him to tell you what to do. See, isn't it amazing how we get to the point we want Jesus to show up, but we only want him to show up so he can babysit us, so he can pat us on the back. We don't want to hear the instructions, but you got to know that if he's going to have compassion, there's going to be instructions. So the Bible says, uh, when Jesus saw them, he said this, he says, go show yourselves to the priest he gives instruction can I tell you this and as we enter into this last 40 some odd days of this year whatever God tells you to do it is in your best interest to go I've made up my mind that I'm not going to renege on what God told me to do. If he told me to do it, I'm going to follow the instructions. Many people now, you're in the, work, in the position that you're in because you didn't follow the instructions. I ain't got time to talk about that because y'all might get mad on Thanksgiving. God told you to do something, but you did what you wanted to do. And now you mad at God because you messed up. Instructions. He says, go show yourselves to the priest now watch this after there is compassion and instruction there has to be a corresponding action so he says Jesus says go and so the action uh, uh, was out of obedience can I tell you this whenever the Lord gives instruction it is your obedience that starts the process of manifestation it is your obedience that starts the process of manifestation. Whenever there is an act of faith, you got to be prepared to move. You got to do something. Don't say you believe God, but you don't want to do what he told you to do. So he says, go. And the Bible says, as they went. As they went, they were healed. And so, I'm almost there. As they went they discover that they receive manifestation of what they were believing for. Now watch this. Ten guys see Jesus. They say, Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus notices them. He says, I need you to go show yourselves to the priests. Now you want to talk about walking by faith. Jesus never said, I need you to go south to see the priests. I need you to go north and see the priest no no he said go and so the bible says that without any conversation they went as they went the bible says they were healed now as an act of their obedience god healed them but watch this one one of them the bible says he notices that, that, that the sores were drying up. He, he, he notices that, 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 that what I was dealing with, as I'm going, I'm not dealing with it no more. And so, and so watch this. I, I, I don't have time to wonder what just happened because, you know, we got this stuff. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, that's good. But when you elevate your mind to a certain level of maturity, there ain't that much thinking. You already know what you know. He didn't have to think about the goodness of Jesus. When he saw that he was healed, he already knew who did it. And so, and so, and yeah. The, the, the Bible says, the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says that, 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 that he turned and went back. What type of attitude do you have to be, uh, to have in order to be walking and see yourself healed? And you ain't got no praise and worship leader. You ain't got no pastor telling you to do nothing. You ain't got no slap your neighbor high five. You ain't got no turn around three times. You ain't got no one hop this time. Slide to the left. Slide to cha cha. You ain't got none of that. You're the one person that can see what the Lord has done for you. And you got to turn around. So the Bible says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice glorifying God. Watch this. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. 
Watch this. Whenever you experience the goodness of the Lord, it should always cause you to glorify God. I wonder today if I got about 15 people that's not ashamed that say, I know what God has done for me. And since he did it for me, I owe him praise. This man, this man, watch this, this man, Joyce, he didn't just praise God, but he fell down and worshiped God. Uh, now, I ain't got time to give you a dissertation on praise and worship, but there is a difference. You praise God because of what he's done, but you worship him for who he is. And this man did not have a relationship with him. I ain't got time to talk about the text because he was a Samaritan, which meant that Samaritans did not have any type of dwelling or, or, or movement or anything with the Jews. And so he didn't even have relationship, but he had sense. He said to himself, if I'm going to praise you for what you've done, I might as well worship you for who you are. And so the Bible says he fell at his feet. Now, whenever you lay down prostrate before the Lord, it removes your selfishness, your self-centeredness. It puts you in a place. I ain't got time to talk about it. It puts you in a place of humility because you saying it's not about me, but it's all about you. So I got to lay down. He worshiped. Praise and worship. Let me help you. Praise and worship goes together. Like uh, peanut butter and jelly. Huh? Huh? Uh, uh, dressing and cranberry. Come on here. Boy, if y'all eating dry dressing without no cranberry sauce, it go together. If you're going to get a four-piece chicken, you need mouth sauce. It go, it go together. Praise and worship goes together. Why? Because it's easy to be thankful for the stuff. But are you thankful for him? The one man, he wasn't just thankful for the healing, but he honored the healer. God only does what he does because of who he is. Y'all better catch what I'm saying. He provides because he's a provider. He heals because he's a healer. He delivers because he's a deliverer. He does what he does because of who he is. When you have him, you got everything that comes with him. So watch the response. Watch the response. Watch the response. Jesus he receives the praise, he receives the honor, but then he notices the one. He said, were there not ten cleans? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except for this foreigner? So here we have, oh, I got three minutes, five minutes. So here we have, God has to separate the categories. You have those who receive from God and never come back. But then you have the one category where there are those who every time God does something, you know you make it your priority to go back and give glory to God. The attitude of one. This one man, he, he, he had a different attitude when it came to his manifestation. I need to know if there's anybody in the room, you got a different attitude about giving God glory. Your, your attitude ain't like it used to be. You got, you, got, you got a different posture when it comes to giving God glory because you understand that it had not been for the Lord on my side. Well... What key is that? E flat. <laughs> if we're going to do it, you better turn this organ up. <laughs> the one, the one, the one. This one, watch your choice. He came back. He, he was outcast and left for dead, but he came back. He was the least expected to survive, 
but he came back. He was the one that was counted out, but he came back. The one who was put out and put down, but he came back. I got a question. He was the one, but the question is, are you the one? Yeah, can you, can you glorify God without being pumped? and primed and, and, and pick them up and put them down and clap your hands and turn around. Can, can you glorify God without being pushed and stimulated? Can you glorify God without the praise leader, without somebody pumping you, without somebody instructing you? Are you the one? It was, and I'm closing, it was because It was because of his compassion. I don't know if I got anybody that got relationship with him, but you know him to be uh, compassionate. He, it was because of his compassion. It was because of his faithfulness. Anybody know the Lord to be faithful? It was because of his commitment. Anybody know? That the Lord is committed to your success. It was because of who he was that he did what he did. And watch this. At the end of the story, I got to go. At the end of the story, as a result of his gratitude and thanks, he was increased. It's in the text. You read your Bible, verse 19. And he said to him, arise. Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And so because, yeah, of his praise and thanksgiving, Jesus takes him from being healed to being made whole. I don't know if you know what that is. That's really increase. Because anytime the Lord can take you from one place to another that's called increase I wonder on this Thanksgiving morning is there anybody in the room that can say thank you for everything you've done you are position yourself as a result of your Thanksgiving to receive increase y'all turn this organ up let's ride I wonder is there anybody here that's ready for increase Y'all walked in the room with thanksgiving. For the Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord, yeah, for the Lord is good. Y'all might as well get up and have church. But since the Lord is good, do me a favor, slap your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, I'm giving God thanks because he's been good. Oh, give thanks, that's Bible, unto the Lord, for he, he is good. Tell your neighbor, when I look back over my life and I see where God has brought me, I can truly say that I am blessed. I got a testimony, and I don't have time to tell you about it. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, neighbor, God's been good, and I'm going to leave it right there. Because every time I turn around, God, he keeps right on blessing me. He's been good, oh yes he has, he kept me through dangers, thank you grandmama, uh, dangers, uh, seen and unseen, he kept me from the highways uh, and the byways, uh, I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave, I should be in a mental house, but the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, uh, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, he has 
passion all my life I was crazy crazy as hell. but God kept my mind some of y'all know what I'm talking about just this year I should have went into the office and cussed everybody cussed them out they deserved it but the Lord, the Lord, the Lord he stopped me from acting a fool the Lord, the Lord, the Lord he stopped me from forfeiting my inheritance the Lord, the Lord, the Lord he stopped me from sacrificing my increase and for that I give you praise let everything that has breath praise the Lord some of y'all breathing but you ain't praising let everything that has breath praise the Lord some of y'all still sitting let everything that has breath praise praise the Lord the Bible says from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same the Lord, the Lord, the Lord he's worthy to be praised I dare you open up your mouth wave your hands and say thank you because you've been been so good I owe him praise are you the one? 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 turn around and ask your neighbor are you the one? are you the one? if you the one I need you to show some type of sign your hand on yourself on yourself and say I'm the one I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth are you the one oh magnify the Lord with me which means I don't care if you do it or not you getting in on my party. Magnify the Lord with me. Now let us exalt the Lord together. Clap your hands and say glory. Every time you think about something, you should give them glory. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. If I don't see a turkey today, God is still good. If y'all say happy Thanksgiving or not, God is still good. Be not this man. <laughs> Whatever be time. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. He will take care of Now for the next 60 seconds, use your voice as an instrument of praise and shout! somebody in the back I saw you buck like that that's when you think about it you buck a little bit right? come on think about him and give him thanks what? Oh, so look look I'm, I'm gonna give y'all time to do this but if you're gonna do it we gotta do it together 
So do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, hey, stop acting like God ain't good to you. The Bible already said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. At least you can do is put a smile on your face. So now, we about to dance, we about to shout on purpose. I ain't gotta feel nothing. I don't need no instructor. I'm just trying to help y'all so I can set the moment. Now, everybody, look at your feet. Look at your feet. And say, feet, God's been good to us. Tell them again. Say, feet, God's been good to us. So when Pastor Twine count to three, I need you to move. Tell your feet, I need you to move. I need you to move. One, two, one, two, three, come on. Everybody move your feet. Come on, express your thanksgiving with your feet. That's right, pray them with your feet. Let your feet be your expression. Now right there, everybody clap your hands. 